Good decision. We got people chatting over here. What's the word? What are you betting on, Doc? Awful. Okay. So I don't know who that person's talking to, but we're going to go ahead and see. Is that Poker Brat that's talking that? Poker Brat. It could be a chick. Anyways, you would have flopped the set with a queen kicker. Curious, was this directed at me at all? Uh, two donks, dumb and dumber. All right, well, we're going to ask for time. We're going to see. We don't have that good of a hand. We can let one go sometimes. Another one we should be calling, but let's go ahead and save some money. and Let's see if they knock each other out. What a bad flop that would have been. I mean, it, and from there, it just gets worse and worse and worse. Look at this. Me and Rob are fighting for a second. I don't like the sound of that. Let's go ahead and switch that up and raise the pot right now. Try to knock Rob out of the way and see if Poker gets out of the way. There we go. Plus, we got a good hand. Here, we got another good hand. Certainly not one that I'm uh, looking forward to folding at any point. But I don't, I said, don't with this guy. Don't have to. Got a low. I probably got the best hand at this point. We'll see. A little choppy chop that works. You let him hit a set. Look at that. That's a beautiful hand. It doesn't get much better than that, honestly. That's what you do with that hand, no matter what. There you go. Pound it. Cash out poker, baby. Let's go. A hand that you should be folding, but seat's running good. Let's go ahead and maximize. Two checks means I bet, and I take the pot. Good shit. Let's dominate. Poker Brat doesn't matter if I dominate. Poker Brat was talking some crap. I'm just going to tell him right now to shut up. Shush. Well, first, let me get my hand. That's a good hand, but we're going to get out of the way. We would have had nothing, maybe. But we got a better hand here to work with. And we're going to go ahead and get rid of the, the donk. This person was claiming I was a donk. Very much. There we go. Aces to kicker. Suited. Set of aces. Full house. Don't have pocket tens. Don't have pocket tens. We are in the money. Cash out poker, baby. Get a raise. We're going to have to see the flop. It's a good enough hand. We're going to check and allow them to bet themselves in. We're going to try to get something out of them. We're just going to try to get something out of them. Still suck, but we're going to win this tournament, man. We'll call. Ooh, you never fold there. He folded. He folded. Oh, my God. He's going to fold again. You don't do that. Learn right now. Don't do that. I'm going to call just to be decent about it. <laughs> and I'm going to flop two pair and a low and call. Probably win a tournament right here. Oh, well, close enough. The guy's hanging in there. I can't fold. This is a good enough hand. Good thing I don't have to call 300 more. It was such a brutal hand. Got no low. All right. 
Uh, I want to bet so bad, but yeah, literally jack high. And four is eight double suited with a king. I like it. Again, give him the chance just to call. Cannot believe he folded there. He must not have had a low. And he's got a call here. He doesn't have, oh, wow. Wow, don't do that. Don't do what this guy's doing, okay? You're putting yourself all in and giving yourself no choice. You can find a way and bluff your way out of things. Look at he survived in the river. This guy's still in there. I got 200 to call. My, my cards don't matter. You got to call. And that's a really good flop right there. It's straight. Low and you win. Stupid. Cash out poker, baby. Let's go. We like winning tournaments, don't we? That's gonna get us to that's gonna get us to 30 right there. Yeah. Cash out poker, baby. I like one more. Not this 22. That's crazy. What does it pay out again? Is that enough? But the payout for this one is 27. This one could really take this bankroll and put it into stand to make money range, right? But at the minimum, you're making four bucks for a cashier. And that's pretty good. I like that, and I also like another cash game. Got you know. I got about thirty to forty-five minutes left in me tops. And you know, good. I could probably play another three hours if I wanted to, but to be able to enjoy my night and not play seven hours of poker. Oh, I want to! I want to! I want to give this a shot. We're we're getting, we're getting good cards, man. We're getting good cards, and we're gonna switch it to hold them right now. We're gonna play this to win. Let's go, six dollars sit and go. If I win this first or second, I may play one more, but this is probably the last one. We're going to go ahead and put ourselves in, put on the brakes mode right away to let them know, hey, you know, one, we're, you know, we're, we're a little nervous, which in turn means we're a little dangerous right now. Keep that in mind when someone's a little nervous. They become a little dangerous to you. Sorry about the light. I'll try to help it with this, but it's it's kind of bright. So this is much better for me. Cash out poker, baby. We got one more to win to make this a glorious night. And then we might, if we win this first or second, we're going to play some cash and we're going to see what we can really do from here but I might make that a second video we have, we gotta win this we, we got to win this. This is a $6 range. So when you're playing online, the $1 range to the $2 range, jump into the $6 range 
for the most part, is going to be the same thing, to be honest. For $10, for even $100, it's all going to about, about be the same. But a $6 is still going to be a little tougher. A little tougher. So it's something to keep in mind. That not because you're worried about it, but because they might they might just be able to see and it might not just be that easy. And you don't want to underestimate their their perceptive abilities. You know, that they can perceive what you're doing. So you might have to play that hey, these guys are a little better than the two dollar people I was playing, the one or the five dollar people. This is the six dollar level. One to a two dollar level could be an increase in skill. As I said, nothing that you really have to significantly worry about, but if you don't consider it, then it could be a problem. So we're doing good. We are right now up look at this it's going to tell us in the last 60 minutes I've lost two cents but we're in six bucks here so it's not counting that but I've lost two cents we're going to continue playing but we're at two hours now so you know, to keep this a relatively, you know, you can't use that word short at all, but a, a, a re, you know, to keep it reasonable at all to watch, I got to keep this under three hours. Especially, you know, if someone's going to want to sit there and watch three hours someone making 10 or 20 bucks. But if you do watch me and listen, you will learn. Patience is very, it's almost the most important thing poker because if you can show people that you're patient you can show them that either one or two things exist aside from that you're not just being patient so you can fold every blind you're being patient so you can optimize a time to be aggressive or creative or a combination of the both so there's some people who can be both aggressive and creative very, very well. And some people can be very aggressive and maximize their profit on good hands. But they're essentially going to telegraph what they got or close to what they got. And then you choose if you want to gamble with them or whatever. When we're talking about creative betting more so. And by the way, we hit an ace there. Creative betting. I think the ace is good here. Probably not with that bet, but who knows? Creative betting is someone who doesn't need to bet, you know, pot every time in order to make sure that they, they got enough chips to survive the tournament. You know, they can they can allow the person to bet all their chips for them. And just eat them. Just fucking eat the, the person next to you or across from you. It's over. And you don't have to be the person who's going to pot, 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 or go all in, or, you know, 4X, you know, if the big blind seven, you know, 60 and you're betting 400, you don't have to be that person. You, know, you can be the person calling that person, knowing that person's on low that 
they're just not going to back off. Unless they really are in disgust of the flop. Unless they hate the flop. You know, like 80% of the time, that grandiose, aggressive type of behavior is going to bet the flop. And then there's a 40% chance they're going to continue on the turn. And from that point, you know, it, I'd say it harbors around. I mean, every, every situation is different, but. But we got a pair, a pair of something. Let's go ahead and give it a min race. This is a good one. You know, it's a telegraphing move. But it isn't telegraph specifically nines. This could be ace queen. This could be sevens. This could be twos. This could be aces. I mean, there's just, it's hard to predict what the person has. Now we know what we got. And that's not the greatest of boards to catch a nine and a set on, but I like I like just keeping it simple, keeping it small. Because some guys keeping it small is like, hey, you're not trying to scare them off, but you're also keeping it small because maybe you don't have too much. So they're thinking, why is this guy going to bet another 180? Maybe I don't have too much. I don't want to bet too much in my hand, but in reality, I got a, I got a fucking monster right now. And then we got what we needed. Now we just got to call and that, that worked it was good enough good way to get on the board good job let's do this cash out poker it helps to get a set of nines it helps to get these hands but even without it I mean you know if you, if you get a deck of cards and there's no internet involved, and you're going to get pairs, you're going to get sets, you're going to get opportunities where your ace high, your king high is good. I mean, you're just, you know, you're going to get your chances to win. you got to capitalize on them. And if you're absolutely getting no chances to win, you got to stop playing. This could be a sit and go ladder night where, you know, you just, if I were to stay up and how you do it is, okay, so if, let's say I win this one. And at this point I got, a, I got the chip lead and I got a lot of scared people around me. But aside from that, you just bet, see what happens. But we got 27 to first. 16 and 1080 for second and third. That bought me the turn, which buys me another opportunity to bluff. And my MO is I'm going to double, double, double. So 60 to 120 to 240. And my MO is just, you know, to get the fuck out of the way now because this person has a hand in the big blind, apparently. Queen five could be good. But it's probably not. Like a 15% chance that queen five is good here. That a queen is good. I mean, it's just a big blind versus small blind. This guy could have just outplayed me there. Nonetheless, lost a few hundred. I'm in great shape. Playing a game that it's just it's easier for people to fold. Because in Omaha, you're constantly getting these these ace threes. These it's just Omaha, and then Omaha high low, you're constantly getting the best of both worlds. Working on it. Let's go. Jack six. 
I mean, we gotta we gotta keep our head in the game here, keep the brakes on. But if we get a chance here to um, to to get into a hand, it's not the worst. Just before you, it's either limp or raise here. I like the raise. If you do it fast enough, it goes through sometimes. If that happens, you got to call. I mean, now now you just, you got someone's, if this guy raises, then I can fold. And I prefer that. But now I got to call him in for 640 against ace, whatever. I got a pair. Now they, we both have the same pair. So we just doubled someone up. And that's no good. So we got to keep the brakes on. We're still the chip. No, we're the second in chips now. Went from first in chips to second in chips. That quick. Doubled someone up on a hand that maybe I could have avoided. Use views. Are pretty good. The VU, whatever the gas station is pretty good. It's a good little smoke. We catch a little another crappy high card. The blinds are getting big now. I'm only sitting on twenty something bigs, but the good thing is, is I am second in command on chips. Which, as I said, if I can. You know, not get fucking raised all in and just take a, you know. They not have the ace yet. Yeah. Get 225 for that little steal. That's a good little, you know, or what is it, 150? So here we go. Let's reward ourselves with another fold. That's a problem with Hold'em is that certain times are going to make a lot really fast. Because you, if you know how to value the hands, the way, you know, we all value, that's where people make money, is just valuing and devaluing. So valuing uh, ace, king, and being able to put all your chips on it is not the greatest concept to, to live off of. To do it, to be able to do it is important. Yeah, because ace, king is a really good hand, very dominant hand. Let's just say it's high. So keep that in mind. I'd rather, I'd rather have twos through tens. I'd rather have twos. Heads up. Or three ways. Ten rundowns back to back. Just, you know. Give me twos, give them ace king and ten jack. What we got? We got a six seven here. All the more reason to see a flop. Someone says we got to go all in or something. We will. Probably flop the best hand here. We'll put to him in a nice smooth bet. Collect our coins. Move on. Very good. Let's go. We're surviving. Keeping it moving. This is Cash Out Poker Network. And I believe in making money while having fun. No one just wants to have fun all day, every day, and that's all you do. So, got to have fun, make some money. Um, I've got to, I've got to tilt myself toward this smoke a little bit. Oh, we got a queen. Nice little queen eight. I mean, we got some small blinds there. 
It's people who really don't want to call a thousand. So I'll do the majority of a thousand. I mean, I, don't, I definitely don't want to be folding anything here. Again, you, you got to be that person willing to take those blinds, willing to put them to make the decision. You don't want to be the person who ends up being like, you then you're the guy with 1,000, 1,200, 800, 1,700 now. You want to be making them make the decisions. That's why sometimes I'll take the 9, 10 all in with someone because, shoot, I mean, as long as I can push it. So that's probably the, 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 the one of the reflecting on this tournament. I, I, I lost with 9, 10, I think it was, to the guy's 7s. You know, it was 8, 9 suited to the guy's 7s. If I would have pushed and made him make the decision, it would have been better because there's, there's, you know, 3 out of 10, they're going to fold. And then the 7 out of 10, you're going to split. At a fit of 45%. So you're making money. And it's all about winning your time, though, especially with tournaments, because tournaments of cash games alike, if you're playing enough hands, you're going to you're gonna win a certain amount of hands. So. so Got an all in and a call. And we got a scoop to the right. Tell you what, someone's out. We're moving closer into that profit range in this tournament. We got a oh, we got a four nine off. Oh boy. And then I got I got someone min raising me, essentially or three raising me, two two actually three actually. Put enough on there, huh? Got ace three, it's good. Revenge hand right now with just six people there. And these guys get out of my way. I'm in to take the button, and that's the only two people right there I'm interested in, in folding for. All right. Get out of the way. I was going to call there, but we'll just stay out of the way. See? They put in 200, and he folded it. That's why... It's good to force the action instead of having the action forced on you. You're, you know, sometimes it's it's okay. It's actually promoted not to be so uh, grateful or so happy with someone allowing you to see a flop. And in often cases, that means that they want to see a cheap flop. So we got. Six horses left. I'm sitting in second with my chippies until the end of this pot, unless a ha 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 wins. There we go. This feels like the last tournament for sure, because. Cash will wake me up. Tournaments, I can literally get just bored of them. The cash will, typically is always interesting enough. We're doing good. We're holding our chips.
All right. We got a, if we were to call here, we'd have a backup nut flush draw. We have a, a, a straight draw right there. 2-9 is easy to get rid of. Easy to walk away from. Jack nine, I'm happy with that in the big line. I'm not thrilled that someone's raising, but I, you know, could have a lot worse. Uh oh. He said he did not have a good enough hand. All right, so this is a hand I definitely, you know, got to press the action with, I believe. I like pressing the action here. I get a call of the big blind, and this guy behind me is going to fold. And there you go. Smack the 10 on the river. Pound it, money, money, game, cash out, city. Sometimes you got to gamble. Ace, eight. Let's go ahead and take this. Let's go ahead and bet a thousand. Let's go ahead and put him, put him to the test. Take out one. I'll take out the next one too. Let's get to work because right now there's two people who have very little chips, and then there's two people who have a lot of chips, and then there's me right in the well, way up by the a lot of chips. I'm more way more towards a lot of chips. Most definitely. Sitting second in command of chips right now. We got a call. Sometimes he raised, but this guy's very nice. So you got to call. Make sure that that king high, that king two spades gets, gets a look at a flop, but also three handed. <clears throat> what would it be? Five, six handed, but still gets a chance to uh, take it. that go Here we go. We're getting closer. We're almost there. One more. One more. And we're in the money. Now here's the deal. This guy is about to freaking lose. You just folded for 50 more. You never do that unless you're cheating. I mean, that's like really so stupid. Or it's a cheat move. I mean, that is just dumb. Folded for fifty more. I mean, what a what a what a little what a little weasel, man. I mean, normally I raise, but this guy's got enough chips to fucking do some damage to me. So, King Jag, we're gonna let it go. And get in that money. Let's go. We're getting there. And this this is my last sit and go, my friends. A seven is good. A seven is real good. Let's let's go ahead and No, it's over. We lost. This guy's hanging in there, man. He is hanging in there. He's not going away. All right. Big Stack says he likes his hand. Can get out of the way. Myself. So. 
Since he's going to go ahead and make it a call, I'm going to call that. We're going to see what happens here. Sounds like by the checking sounds, one of us needs to get lucky. We didn't get lucky. And then Maverick's going to take 1500 if this guy checks. Oh, that's how it is. Time to let them have it. Send the cannonballs out there. Can't be slacking when you get an ace high four, four ways, four handed. Look at that respect, bro. Got that table image going. Cash out poker. Let's go. This Maverick guy's not going away. We might have to take someone else out. Let's go. Got him. Got him. Got him. Let's go. Ace King in this situation. Yeah, you bring it to him and make him call all the chips. No good. Close, but no good. And we're in the money. And here comes the pressure. And if I was them, I wouldn't be waiting on me to go anywhere. Let me tell you. I better just keep on working for second place. It helps you a lot because this guy's going to put the brakes on. He may even fold, or you can call him loose, which is even better. So there you go. Brakes firmly pressed onwards. Got another ace. Got another reason to, you know, push him in, but avoid going on. Got – we've got a – fucking set of aces I mean, come eight i mean come on i'm trying to get this fucking bankroll up a little higher we're up 202 dollars in this single he's 
Nope. Uh, it's a horrible hand of the, hopefully, hopefully, yeah, that's what you hope has. The table image is enough. They don't suspect that you're going to do that with a jack, with a 7-2 or whatever that. Probably a loose call. Oh, seems to be worth it. Definitely not worth it so much anymore. Only chance is the bluff here. Not going to do it. Just live one more hand, and hopefully this guy is getting in trouble with each other. Can't do that with that. I'll tell you that right now. With that flop, I could have done it with that for sure. That would have been nicer. Look at that. Good to do. All right, let's get a little lucky. Come on. A little bit of luck, a little bit of luck, a little more luck, a little more luck. There we go. Let's go, Cash Out City. We got to rock the boat now. Can't put the fucking pedals off the metal now. Let's go. A little bit of luck goes a long fucking way, baby. Got it. I was going to call that for sure. Good flop, good flop. Go get a nice little river there. Let's go. Making some money. Last tournament. Let's go. We got to take first. Keep in mind, we're sitting at just over 10 bigs. So even with good hands, we want to kind of play it the same way and just. Another good hand. He can raise all he wants to. I'm shipping. There he got me. I 
I hope you enjoyed that. That was a nice little... Nice little two and a half hour session. We are at $40. Great job today, gang. Thanks for staying with me. 1666 to 4043 is a virtually $24 win for this three hour session, which is great. 4043 is great. It is 23 cents less than that amount of profit. So thank you for hanging with me. Let's see how this works. And we'll see you next time. Cash out poker.